Hello artist! In today's video, I'm sharing this month's favorites. So let me know in the comments which products, which paints, what are you loving right now? I would love to know. If you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Rid. I'm a watercolor and mixed media artist and on my channel, I share my artsy adventures. Enjoy! I want to share with you some of my favorites this month and I'll put links to everything that I can find below. This is a new to me watercolor sketchbook and I'm actually really enjoying it. The cover is white and they say that you can alter it. It's from Cleo Fontaine. It is hot press and I've been really uh, enjoying it. So I wanted to share that with you. Another sketchbook that I love, this is now, I don't even know which, which one it is for me. Just this year, I think I finished four of these. It's the Royal Talents Art Creations. This is like the A5 size. It's my favorite size. Uh, it's like a go-to mixed media, probably mostly dry media sketchbook. I wouldn't, I just started this one. I wouldn't recommend it if you're just using watercolors, but if you use mixed media and a lot of pencils and pastels and you want a sketchbook that is just not complicated, not expensive, uh, that you can use without feeling precious, uh, I think this is like a really, excellent, excellent choice. Uh, I'm right now really loving the coral color, but there's also a light purple that I really like. I can actually show you, because I have it right here. So this one is finished. This is the landscape format. I like it less. Uh, I did kind of fall in love with it at the end of when it was almost full, when I started making kind of these uh, abstracts in it. Pages do get a little bit stuck when you use uh, acrylic paint. So I actually really fell in love with this size only when I started making these kinds of pages. For some reason it was really fun for that. Again, it's just you get so much paper for a very, very, very low price. So I just love these. Uh, the colors are pretty, the paper is good. Again not for watercolor, uh, but for like light washes, it's kind of okay. I mean, this I did, you can see this has like a little bit, like here and there, some wet uh, paint. The paper buckles, like you can see here, I think, kind of how it buckles. It's not great, uh, but I'm like, I love it now enough to, to just be able to kind of use everything in it. So this is like a huge, huge favorite of mine for the last six months probably, since the spring, like early spring. My favorite palette, and I have to say something about uh, using gouache and watercolors. I just find that with some colors, when I'm looking for intensity, the best way for me to get that is with gouache, uh, especially because some of the watercolors that I use, if you use them thickly, they dry with kind of a sheen, like you can see that binder in it. Uh, and in gouache, you don't get that. Like gouache are completely matte. And here I switched, actually like I'm shocked at myself, but instead of having ultramarine blue, uh, watercolor in this palette. I actually have gouache and it's been working really well for me. I just love the intensity that I can get with this. You could also get this with watercolor. It's not that you can't get this with watercolor. Let me show you my watercolor so you don't so you don't say that I am exaggerating. I mean, this is not like usually I would spray my palette, but this I get from dry gouache. And with watercolors, if I want intensity, 
then it just takes more work. And this is like instant. So let's try, I actually have another, I have here the Schminke one, it's quite gooey. The Schminke French Ultramarine, which has beautiful granulation. This is not a great paper for that. So I can get there. It's not that I can't get there, but we'll see how it looks when they dry. And I've just been really enjoying the gouache. I feel like it's it's a very easy uh, option for, especially for sketchbooks that don't love a lot of water. Another thing that has been working really well for me is this little setup of Neocolor 2. I can, like, I take it with me, you know, when I'm out and about, when I'm going, like, downstairs if I want to sketch, uh, watching TV. Uh, this is an old box of the tin. It's actually a tin for these watercolor pencils from uh, Ranger, uh, from their Distress line. And it came in this with, like, a plastic insert which I removed. If you want to fit more into a tin, then I recommend like breaking them. I actually prefer like holding them when they are not uh, broken, but, but it can get uh, kind of heavy if you want like a lot of colors. Uh, so this is a good way to reduce uh, space and weight. Uh, so this has been working well for me. Uh, another thing that I have been enjoying, and this was inspired by the inspiration board for this month in the Joy Art Club, which is my monthly membership. As I was falling down all kinds of rabbit holes <laughs> and uh, gathering inspiration, and great resources for this month, I took out some of my liquid watercolors, which I admit, it's not a medium that I use a lot, just because I find, you know, a palette so much faster and easier to use. But there is something about the intensity of these uh, that, uh, that they're like really fun to use. So I want to show you, I have a, a lot of these but I picked some colors inspired again by the just like this warm color palette that we've been uh, talking about this month and I'll show you like my favorite colors so this is PH Martin radiant uh, watercolors radiant concentrated watercolors and this is the color tiger yellow it comes in the D set, so this is 55D. I think they have like four sets. And it's just, as you can see, it's just like a very um, orangey yellow. And then kind of its earthy partner. Some of these have uh, some pigment that you want to shake to get even distribution. So these, this is Ecoline or Ecoline, I think that's how uh, they pronounce it. And this, I love this color. This is gold ochre. And it's just beautiful. I've been really, really enjoying painting with this. You can see, this is like, the paper is hating this, the art creations. Um, it's probably like one of the worst. You can see also, it like bleeds. Um, I really don't recommend using it, but my watercolor uh, sketchbook is wet now from all the indigo experiments. So let me just show you a few of my favorite colors. This is pastel red, again from Ecoline, and it's just so beautiful. I love this color. It's like this soft peach, so, so beautiful. And now for some intensity, like all of these now are intense, as the name suggests. This is Persimmon. It's another beautiful color. 3A Persimmon from PH Martin Radiant 
could probably, I wonder if I add a lot of water to this one, I could probably get something similar to that pastel red. Maybe that's why I like these two. Mm, not exactly, but it's not very far. Uh, and then also this color. So we were painting, or I was painting like this landscape, and I used some of these. So this is 18B Crimson. It's just, it's, it's actually dark. You can get like dark, you can get intensity with this one. And a great dark color if you want even deeper. Again, you're probably better off like really shaking these. This is Mahogany 27B. You can see, super dark, but it has a beautiful tone to it. This, these colors are great for like autumn scapes, treescapes, landscapes. Beautiful. And then for a pop of pink, wait, let me, this is 4A Alpine Rose. This is just like intense. They have a lot of like really intense pinks. Uh, and this one was like my favorite when I tried them out now. So you can see just like how intense this is. And a nice green. I don't have a lot of like greens that I like in liquid watercolor, but this is probably uh, like just one of the few. And this is from Ecolina. I hate the packaging because it doesn't have a pipette. So you either need to like, like it doesn't have a dropper in it. I think these are the old, the or old form format like old packaging I think now they all come with a pipette which is like with a dropper so that's that's very very good but this one is what are you grass green and I would usually like mix it with something probably like a yellow to make it a bit more earthy but yeah I wanted like a green because I was painting some landscapes So I wanted to show you these. I hope you enjoyed this. I don't know what was happening with this color. You can see it reacts weirdly with the paper. Like the other ones didn't do that. Hmm, weird. So I thought it would be fun to show you all of the indigos that I have and leave a comment below if you have a good indigo recommendation <laughs> and we will be the judges of if it's good. So what I like an indigo color to be is deep and blue. Show you uh, some of my favorites and some that I think are close so you can be the judge. So let's start with pencils. And here my favorite is, I'll zoom you in. My favorite is the Carandash Dark Indigo. Um, it's probably very diff it's probably different to the other indigos that we will see, but I love it as like my dark. So it's six, three, nine. It's almost black. It really kind of reads, reads black. This is my favorite black, ivory black from Derwent. And you can see, I think on screen they look almost identical, but when I look at them next to each other, this one has that deep blue. But this is like dark indigo is a very good name for it. Uh, because it's very very dark but I really really love it for sketching and it's just a beautiful pencil um, some people like uh, Payne's Gray I'm right now a dark indigo gal so 
I saw actually that also Faber-Castell has dark indigo. So I bought it in both of their um, pencils. So one is the Polychromos. And it's a little bit more muted, I would say, and not as deep as this one. Uh, and I think like many people will like it. I prefer the, the formula of the Luminance pencils. I don't know, I never fell in love with the Polychromos. It's the same with this one. Maybe, I'm sure other people will love it. I'm not going gaga over it. And this one is the Albrecht Durer, which is water soluble. So let's see what you get. you get this color. So I still haven't found a watercolor pencil in this color that I like more. So I think this could be a good uh, choice for me for like a dark watercolor pencil. And I do love the effect that you get, right? When you kind of use this pencil also on a wet surface. So I think this one is a good choice. Right now it's new to me, uh, but it is in my go-to pencil case and I just need to kind of familiarize myself a little bit more with it. But I think it's a nice one. The, the Polychroma one is not, not my fave. Now, another one that I have been loving is the Neocolor 2 Blue Indigo. And... I just love this one. I don't think they have this color in the Neo Color 1. So let me show you. I actually mostly use the Neo Color 2 also without water, uh, but it does give you this is quite more purpley, I would say, right? It leans more purple. I think it's very obvious when you put it next to this one. But yeah, I wanted to show you. I love this one. I don't use it with water. I'm actually not like not loving this purpley color, but without water, I really love it. And I use it all the time. It's just a really great dark. In my go-to palette, I think this is my darkest color. So I don't have any like black or grays. Uh, this is my dark. So I wanted to show you, this is blue indigo and it's going back. My other dark, just to kind of give you options, is this royal blue and it looks like this. Beautiful, right? And then this is how it looks with water. So this one is, I would say, less purple than this. Lovely. So these are like my two go-to darks. I'm just having a moment with really deep blues. So those were the pencils. Markers, I don't think I have anything besides this one. This is in Danthron Blue. I have to check, I don't know if they make also, like if there are good marker indigos. Let me know in the comments. But this, I would say, kind of ticks that box. So this is, these are my current favorite markers. As far as I know, they're not light fast. This is a Faber-Castell Gold Faber Aqua Dual Marker. This is in Danthron Blue 247. It doesn't move as much as these. But it is somewhat water soluble. I don't think this is a particularly attractive effect. I use these as markers. I don't really care about the fact that they are water soluble. So let's move on now to paint. I'll start with all the water, like with the watercolor and gouache, and then we'll move on to acrylic paint. So let's start with watercolor and the ones that I have are 
the Schminke one and this Shinhan Pass, which I don't like. The Schminke one is my all-time favorite indigo. And this one, you can see, it's like a very... Yeah, I don't even know how to like describe the difference. I guess this leans to me more green than purple. I'm not hating this color now that I'm looking at it, but I prefer the Schminke one, which I have in this palette, and I love it. It's just a great dark color, and it's beautiful for like night sketches or deep blue seas. This is my favorite indigo. And I think the reason that I like it is because it doesn't have black in it. It's just two blue pigments. It's PB15, which is phthalo blue, and PB66. So editing Irit here, I went and checked and PB66 appears to be uh, indigo. And from what I gathered, I didn't do a, do a deep dive. So if you have more information, then please uh, add a comment. It seems that the light fastness of PB66 is not the best. And so I think that's why many brands uh, formulate their indigos with different pigments. Uh, it could be also that it is a harder to find pigment. I'm not sure. I couldn't find a ton of information. Uh, I also found a website called artistpigments.org and they have information about uh, all pigments. And what is also nice about it is that they actually have swatches. So I learned something new. Now back to swatching. Which I'm not sure what it is, but most other indigos have black in them. And I just like it less. So this one, for example, the Shinhan one. Actually, no, this one is just PB66. So it's a single pigment, but I think it's less attractive than this one. Now I wanted to show you, I have some uh, watercolor. These I haven't really used, so I don't even remember how I feel about them. So this one is the Aquadrop Schminke Indigo Blue. These are liquid watercolors, super, super intense. This color is completely transparent. And this actually really looks like Indanthran Blue, I would say. So very, very intense. I think a lot of people would like this. Personally, I prefer Schminke's like original, like their regular traditional watercolors, but I think this would be a great uh, choice for a lot of people. Let me check the pigment. Interesting. <laughs> so this one is PV23 and PG7. So I'm not sure what PV23 is, I can't remember, but PG7 is phthalo green. Very interesting. I'm guessing PV23, it's probably like dioxazine violet or something like this. Yeah, I wanted to show you. Let's see what it does when you really... This has excellent light fast ratings. Let's see with their watercolors. Um, the watercolors actually they say it is opaque. Interesting. And two stars, I don't remember, but I don't think it's their highest light fast rating. But it's my favorite <laughs> version. <laughs> okay, so let me show you the gouache one. Oh no, I have a couple more uh, so just for uh, comparison, this is Ink Blue from Schminke. This is also transparent and has excellent light fast rating. Let's see how it looks. I'll put a little drop here and then. These are like super, super intense. I think if you like the Ecoline 
liquid watercolors, but you don't like the fact that they are not light fast, then you should try these. They don't have the same color range and the colors are not as nice as the Ecoline, but it is uh, a high quality option. Okay, so this is very ultramarine-y to me. Let's see the pigments here. This is phthalo blue and the same PV23, like the same pigment this thing has. So phthalo blue plus, I'm gonna guess this is like dioxazine violet. But yeah, so this is not indigo vibes. These are the indigo vibes, but I just wanted to show you. And then another version that I have that looks also not very indigo-y is this one from Dr. P.H. Martin Tech Drawing Ink. This is like a super, super old um, ink that I have. Uh, I think these are also supposed to be light fast. And this looks completely like a phthalo blue or cyan. So don't like that you that they named it indigo. Let's move to gouache. And I have three versions. So this is the Windsor and Newton one. So what's important to me to see with gouache is actually how it looks in full intensity because I love using gouache with less water. So that's what I'm looking for, like an attractive color, pure from the tube also. And I don't know, this version you can see, it's not as, just doesn't have that same look. So I was hoping that the Schmincke uh, indigo gouache would be the same as their watercolors. And I was very disappointed that it's not. So that was a bit of a dud for me. It just, I just don't see the, the depth and beauty <laughs> of it. <laughs> so then I thought, okay, maybe I'll try a different Schminke, and I got this Paris Blue gouache, and it was, again, very disappointing. It was more like phthalo blue. It just looks like phthalo blue. So I feel a bit cheated. I should have looked at the pigments because it is phthalo blue, uh, but I feel this is like misleading because I think they have a color like this in their watercolor range, that is in Danthron Blue or something similar. So so for me, I don't really have an indigo that I like in gouache. If you have a recommendation, if you have something like this in gouache, I want to know. This one is not bad. Like the Schminke one, the liquid one. This is pretty. It also makes a huge difference when you wait for these colors to dry. Sometimes they look so beautiful and luscious when they are wet, and then when they dry, they lose all of that. Last but not least is acrylic paint. And here I have a clear favorite that just is my go-to, and I've been using it a lot, uh, alongside another blue, and I'll show you both of them. Uh, so this is the Lucas indigo and I absolutely love it. I think it is a beautiful, beautiful color. And again, I haven't really seen something similar. So this one actually has black in it and phthalo blue and PV23, the mystery purple. I'm sure there are people yelling at the screen, this is blah, blah, violet, this one, you should know it. Or Go check. <laughs> so again, such a beautiful, this is like my favorite. A beautiful, beautiful, deep 
blue that I don't feel uh, that the black here is felt. I think it's beautiful. And then just to show you, I think it's just really helpful to see colors next to each other so you can figure out what kind of floats your boat. The other dark that I've been enjoying besides uh, indigo and sometimes black that I do use in acrylics. I don't use in watercolor uh, black right now. Um, it's not a principle thing, it's just a taste thing. So this is the Lucas Prussian Blue. Like straight from the tube, this color is more appealing to me, but I found that with the other colors that I use all the time, like these very warm earthy greens and very bright pinks uh, they just look beautiful next to this color so Prussian blue from Lucas uh, but I'm sure like many brands have Prussian blue uh, and I don't think this one is particularly different uh, it's just Lucas is a very available and affordable brand uh, here in Europe and they do have some really beautiful colors. I actually saw that they came out with some new colors. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I showed you some fun uh, favorites that you might want to add to your collection. Let me know which one was your favorite uh, and let us know in the comments which colors or supplies you are loving at the moment. Uh, I'm always happy to you know, try new things if it's something I'm not familiar with. And it's also very helpful to other viewers to go and read the comments. Uh, so share your favorite indigos or your favorite darks to use in your paintings. And, you know, if you have like specific colors from specific brands, then uh, we would love to know. Let me just dry these and we can look together at the finish of all of these uh, ultramarines. Okay, let's take a look together. So I can tell you that uh, in this case, uh, everything is matte. But I can also show you, like I know that I have watercolors in my palette that dry with, that if I use them if I have a high pigment or paint load on my brush, they don't dry matte and I don't like that. Uh, but in this case, uh, you can see that it's, that all of them are matte. Uh, I think like to me, this is smoother and it was easier to achieve with less water and shorter time. And you got, just get like a smoother finish. Let me know which one is your favorite. I just like using the gouache for sketchbooks uh, when I want that flat, intense application. And then watercolors, I love using ultramarine, but I usually use it uh, with a lot more water so you can see the granulation. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you very soon in another one. Take care, bye-bye.